Hi, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to get into the beginnings of the basics of JavaScript. So if you're starting to experiment with JavaScript, then that generally means you're already pretty well versed at making web pages using HTML and CSS. That is HTML, let me jump over here for a quick second. So HTML for setting up the structure and content of a web page and CSS for styling the look and perhaps the layout of that web page. And it's good to think of this as, as several layers. HTML for structure, CSS for style or design, and then JavaScript for the behavior of the web page. So let's kind of check out what I have so far. Um, I've got an HTML file written in HTML5. I've got my doc type definition, head section, title, uh, character encoding meta and I also do have a link to an external style sheet. The body of my page simply contains two elements. I've got a heading one and I've got a paragraph with a unique ID, ID equals subtitle. So far no JavaScript. On my style sheet um, I'm controlling uh, several elements okay the body of the page the heading one and my paragraph with ID subtitle using pretty normal CSS2 properties. Now back over on the HTML, I would like to put in some JavaScript and ultimately I would like to, when a user clicks on a button, the text within this paragraph will change to something else. And that, in a nutshell, is what we're going to use JavaScript for in even more complex ways. Based on some event, the user doing something, and the user could be clicking on a button or mousing over an object or loading a page or anything, Based on the user doing something, the web page will do something else. And JavaScript will tell the web page, the web browser, how to do the thing you want to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and take care of it this way. In the head section of my web page, I'm going to write some JavaScript. And I'm going to start off by creating a set of script tags, opening and closing. Now, JavaScript can be typed in several places on a web page. It can be typed in the head section. It can be typed in the body section. It can be typed inline, for instance, kind of like we do uh, inline styles. It can be typed actually in a tag uh, using an event handler as an attribute. More on that later. The Probably the most professional way to work with JavaScript, though, whenever, all, whenever possible, is to put your script on an external file. Okay, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Kind of like we use CSS on an external file to manage multiple web pages, it's ideal if you can put your JavaScript on an external file to manage multiple web pages. I'm going to start off by embedding some script up here in my head section. So, in between my opening and closing script tags, I'm going to go ahead and start off with, um, with a basic function. And we'll do more on this later in other videos, but I just want to kind of give a rundown on some common terminology that you're going to be using. So I'm going to declare a function. The name of my function is going to be new subtext with an opening and closing set of parentheses, followed by an opening curly braces. I'll press my enter key a couple times, and I'm going to do a closing curly set of braces. So let's pause here for a second. Um, a function is simply a group of JavaScript statements or tasks that you want to trigger at one time. And I like to think of a function as kind of a macro. So if you're making a macro in, let's say, Excel, when you click on a menu button, you might want a series of things to occur. Maybe you want a table of data to get sorted numerically, smallest to largest, and you want alternating rows to change background colors and the macro would contain all of the steps and then to trigger that macro you would click on a button. Same kind of thing with JavaScript. I'm giving my function a name. I just made this name up, new subtext, and it has an empty set of parentheses. That's the name of my function. In between the opening and closing curly braces I'm gonna have as many statements as necessary to do what I want to do. So that's how that works. Now sometimes when you create a function in JavaScript, there'll be nothing in the parentheses, but sometimes there are. And what goes in those parentheses are parameters or arguments. And if you're an Excel person, that's going to be familiar to you because if you use the today function in Excel, that's the word today with an empty set of parentheses. There are no arguments for the, for the today function in Excel. 
but if you use the sum function in Excel, you have to put arguments in there. So some functions we use will have no arguments, some functions we use will have arguments. Today, I'm just working on a function that I've made up has no arguments. Now, in between the opening and closing, cur closing curly braces, I'm going to put in some things that I want this script to do. The first thing I'm going to do is declare a variable, and I'm going to use the keyword var space, and then I have to make up a name for my variable. I'm going to call mine subtext2, and then I'm going to do a space equals space, and then I'm going to put in quotation marks. What else is JavaScript? It is a client-side language interpreted by the browser. Closing quotes, semicolon. Okay, so let's see what I've got here. I'm telling my web browser that I'm going to create a variable. The name of my variable is subtext2. The name of my variable is completely made up. It doesn't start with a number, though, and there's no spaces. What is this variable equivalent to? This variable is equivalent to a statement, or more correctly, a string of text, a literal string. And I've enclosed that in double quotes. I could have used single quotes, but I'm using double quotes here. And then at the end of my statement, I've put a semicolon. And if you're a CSS person, this is all pretty familiar to you. Check this out. Here's a CSS rule. H1 is my selector. I have an opening set of curly braces and a closing set of curly braces. And within this rule, I have four declarations. And each of my declarations is finished with a semicolon. In JavaScript, you'll put a semicolon after statements so that you can separate one statement from another. So I'm creating a variable within my function. So now the keyword or variable subtext2 is equivalent to this longer sentence or statement. Now after I declare my variable, I want to display this string of text or variable at a different part of my web page. So I'm going to write in document, which is my current web page, dot get element by ID, parentheses, quotation, I can use single or double, I'm going to use single here just to show the variation, and I'm going to put in subtitle, single quote, closing parentheses, dot, inner HTML equals subtext2, semicolon. So let's see what we have here now. In my document, there's an element that has an ID, and the ID of that element is subtitle, and sure enough, there it is. There's an element in my document, my web page, and it has ID equals subtitle. I'm going to modify the inner HTML of that element, in this case a paragraph. Well, what do I want the inner HTML to be? I want it to be subtext2, which is a variable. What does subtext2 mean? Subtext2 is equivalent to my, a uh, the string of text, a client-side language interpreted by the browser. Okay. Now this is a complete JavaScript function. This function declares a variable and then has a method in which it replaces or puts in the inner HTML of an existing element and puts in that information that I've declared already. So this is my first JavaScript. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now what I've done isn't going to affect my web page. I've just saved it, and if I jump over to my web page, here it is, and I hit refresh, there's really nothing interesting to look at. What is JavaScript? Well, it's a language for managing web page behaviors. But where's that script? What did I do? Well, now I need to call that script into action, or I need to trigger it. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to head back over to my HTML file. I'm going to go into the body of my page, Oops. and now let's see, I'll put a little horizontal rule here, and then after this horizontal rule, I'm going to create another HTML element. I'm going to create a button, okay? um, and this button is going to have some text. What else is JavaScript? Now, if you've been making web pages for a while, you may have heard of the button element, but it may not be one that you've ever used. Um, 
you wouldn't really use a button element unless you're also using some JavaScript. So it doesn't usually come up in normal web development. It's kind of like when you use a div. You know, if you're using a div, it implies you're also using style sheets. Why would you use a div if you're not going to use style sheets? Well, why would you use a button if you're not going to use JavaScript? Well, we're using JavaScript today, so let's trigger the button. The button element does exactly what you think it might does. Uh, what you think it might do. That's bad English, I'm sure. It's going to create a button on my web page. Okay, and if I were to save this, go back to my web page and refresh. Sure enough, there's a button, and I can click on this button. Of course, the thing is, when I click on this button, I want something to happen. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this button, and I'm going to insert an attribute, which is really a JavaScript event handler. On click equals, then I'm going to put in the name of my function, which is new subtext. New subtext, empty set of parentheses. So, this is an attribute in my button, and it's on click. Click is an event. On click is an event handler, and there's a bunch of there's a bunch of other ones like on mouse over, on focus, on double click. So basically, when somebody clicks on this button, my new subtext function is going to get triggered or called into action. I'm calling a function. Well, what does that mean when somebody calls in this function? What's going to happen? Well, this is what's going to happen. A variable is going to be created. The variable will be equivalent to the string of text. And then that variable is going to be inserted into the paragraph with the subtitle ID. Let's check it out. So I'm going to save, go back to my browser, and refresh. What is JavaScript? It's a language for managing web page behaviors. Well, what else is JavaScript? Click. It's a client-side language interpreted by the browser. There you go. That's a little bit of intro to JavaScript creating variables, creating functions, and calling those functions on some event. We're going to do a lot more of these and we'll get into more details on functions, variables, and events.